We're live. We're live in live, bro. Hello. How's everyone Hello, doing out boy. there? <laughs> hey, live brushers. How are you? Welcome back to Welcome another brother. amazing Wait. episode with um, Kate Welch Kate and Ray Bonilla. Yeah. You guys hear me? Oh yeah. oh, yeah. I'm getting an echo from you, though. <laughs> just a little bit of echo from my... Just a little bit. Me, me, <laughs> that was pretty go. good. <laughs> oh, man. So what are we doing today, Ray? Dude, I... Uh, no. I have no idea. I'm, like, wrecking my own streaming yeah. setup here. You just don't do that whatever Mac thing you did where you shifted between windows. <laughs> Never do that again. I know. It's so bad, man. It's so bad. I have this new setup, everyone. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, I, I promise that uh, I'm just trying to get better, you know. I think it's going so, pretty good. I mean, I like what you've been doing so far. Yeah. Yeah. It's like... Uh, and I even, Kate, not to show you up, but I have, I have, I have tricks up my tricks up my sleeve. Two, two. God damn it, Ray. Like, what value do I add to the show if you keep getting good at streaming stuff? Like, He's one upping constantly. Ugh. <laughs> so hopefully the stream sounds better and looks better. God, I hope it does. Brought to you by our new sponsor. It looks exquisite. Garage no, Band. Garage Band. OBS Ninja. For those of you, shout out to OBS Ninja. Incredible, incredible piece of software. Um. All right. What do you? What do you? Uh, do you know? I did not load my screen up for Safari, so I have no idea. You know. All right. I'm gonna do my. Apple oh wait, wait. You putting the stream up? Don't do that. No, 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 Don't spy no. On so us. I can, where I could read the chat. I read the chat. Hold on. All right. Just don't don't swipe to the other screen. Yeah. Um I'll I fill know, the I I'll know. fill the space. I'll fill the space. Yeah, can you fill Everyone, the space? Everyone, talk amongst yourselves. Okay, okay. Is my space Tyler, gone? Tyler says that I'm really good at filling the space when you guys have to do stuff. So here yeah. I am. I'm filling the space. Tyler, can you <laughs> Tyler, can you, is there a way to turn off my little bloppy thing? Your bloppy thing? Yeah, yeah. Like where the video is so I can get my, grab my uh, thing really quick. What in the oh. fuck are you talking about? Because I have I, no idea. <laughs> no, just oh, wait, yeah, to, to turn off oh. Ray's browser? Yeah, yeah. Oh, hold on, hold on. Yeah, Let me yeah. try. Just for Let me try. Because gone. I, you know, it's I, gone. Okay. Oh, no, wait, is it gone? Is it gone? Is it, and, yeah. No, is Ray, it, Ray, you look fine. I know, no. I got to get on my website. I got to get on my browser. It's on the behind <laughs> the screen. I don't want people to see. You know. Oh, my God. All right, there we go. He's gone. We got rid of him, folks. <laughs> so um, today, okay, I'm, I'm going to be. Um, are you back? <laughs> um, so the I'm plan back. today. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. He's back. He's back. He's back. My plan today is to keep kind of, I want to mess with the knights that are at the bottom, like the medieval dudes. Um, I want to kind of give them a little more pow. And they're, they're kind of getting lost at the moment. So I want to mess with that. And I think that's what I'm going to work on today. Um, I don't know. I'm at a weird place in this piece. You know, everybody out there, a lot of pieces get weird. You get in weird places where you want to either throw it out or keep pushing through and try and make it look cool. Um, I think I'm at the, I'm almost at the, I want to throw this out stage, but, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think I'm going to keep trying to make it look cool. Cause you know what? You got to take, you got to remember to follow through everybody. Follow you through. You got to remember to follow your dreams <laughs> and follow your dreams. Never give up. Never surrender. <laughs> Good movie. I'm of course quoting uh James T. Kirk, Star Trek Five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um we don't let's not get into that this episode. In chat if you agree with me. <laughs> Tyler, okay. 
do you, would you say it's accurate that you always go through a phase where you want to throw it out? Um, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Do you think it's the painting's fault or should you throw out the artist? <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like just that question alone answers the question alone. <laughs> But, you know, I don't know. Maybe I feel I want to say everyone goes through this. Maybe they don't. But I often get I often get to a point in a painting where I'm like, this is dumb. What am I doing? This is a dumb one. Why did I get this far into it? And it's so dumb. And then sometimes a few hours later, it shapes up. So, yeah, you just got to got to barrel through. Got to keep going. It's like climbing a mountain. I think your painting looks really good, except for the the long arms. Oh They're, man, you're kidding! I worked. That was a whole episode worth of long arming. Yeah, I know. Um, did you not see? La, la, did you not see the last episode? Yeah. Episode seven, long arms. I think I just, I just finally found the courage to say it. I don't know about those long arms. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. There you go. All right. That's a first. But that, that, was that a message? Is that a question from the chat, Kate? Because. Yeah. No. Or is that just. It was, it was from. It was me being a peanut gallery. And you right. should ignore me. This is this is an excellent lesson for the chat to learn. It's like you could say I'm not in the long arms. And the artist could be like, well, I am. I, was, I love the long arms. I was just about to say this is a great. This is a great example of how you sometimes can just forget the feedback that you received <laughs> now you should probably shouldn't do that with client work but if it's like personal stuff and someone's like i don't really like that you can just be like i don't really like you yeah you know but even though well you don't have to turn it like personal <laughs> so definitely yeah. defiant in the chat says keep the long arms but there's a tangent that's challenging my soul Okay. You find it. Oh man. There you yeah, go. there's probably a lot of tangents because I've been barreling through this thing. I'll find it. Don't worry. I, I'm there's semi blind tangents. to it. Many, this is line brush. <laughs> this this is this shows shoulder, all about. Is it the night shoulder tangents. with the with the hand? I think it might be the night shoulder with the hand. Oh, this part. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. That's that's the one. That's mm. my that's my theory. I feel like it's probably this hand being really close to the edge, but you know, here's my problem. I get blinded to an image and I think Not I've handed in I've handed in magic I finals. You'll find it. <laughs> I've handed in magic finals and the art director has been like, um, there's a whole bunch of tangents that you need to fix. <laughs> so I definitely get blind to a piece and um lose the yeah. tangents i think it looks great i think you should keep the long arms you know what sometimes tangents work yeah sometimes they're intentional there's a great there's that great um howard Pyle painting where all those soldiers are kind of they're trying to get that guy off the horse yeah and all of their straps are basically tangenting into this triangular mess of tangents yeah. but that's, it's drawing that's, your eye yeah. right to what they're right to the guy on the horse it's amazing in other words bolo yolo i'm bringing that back <laughs> <laughs> okay. God, I thought you never would. I thought you wouldn't. Get, I thought you weren't gonna bring you it know, back. I was. I was. <laughs> I was eating lunch today. I'm serious. It's a true story. This is how pathetic. Sometimes my lunches by myself can be. And I was thinking, wow, oh, this food's good. And I was like, but did I really need garlic knot to order garlic knots with pizza? Yeah. And then I thought to myself, Bolo Yolo. <laughs> I don't know why I thought that. <laughs> And I was like, where has that been the last, like, <laughs> seven episodes? It's been where it needs to be. <laughs> <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's been comfortably forgotten. Oh, my God. So I am uh, still working on this thing. I am going to try and speed up and finish this as quickly as I can because um, I realized that I have to start sending work out new work to galleries and I can answer questions about that if anybody wants to know but um, yeah so 
I get to the point where it's like, okay, the, the, the fun is over. Now it's time to get work done on this thing. And it's usually when I'm done poking around trying to figure out things. So I'm, I'm going to fill in as much as I can. And then yeah. uh, hit, hit this with the layer of oils. The mouse guardians have rated us. Thank you again. Oh, my wow. Goodness. Amazing. To the mouse guard. Wait, wait. Hold on. Sorry. And David couldn't it's hang not, around. Just, That's okay, though. We're glad to have you guys. It's... Wait, what's the... Uh, yeah, there it is. Yeah. The God prevail. <laughs> Plus for me. Plus for me. We talked about uh, a few episodes back. We talked about Kingdom of Heaven, didn't we? Yeah, we talked about Kingdom of Heaven. <laughs> uh, Kingdom Come. Yeah, um, we've talked about movies a lot. Um, talked about tons of, yeah. But that's okay because I like movies. And this is what Ray and I would normally be doing, is talking about this shit. So, Do you ever watch the, what was that one with the, uh, it's like the fall of, it was like when Sean Connery was uh, played played uh, King Arthur. Oh, yeah. That called, yeah. It was, um, First Night. Hated that movie. Yeah, it was bad, right? It was bad. Who Did was they, in that movie? Richard Gere? They had a, Richard, Richard Gere. Gere, and it felt like they had just a ton of rubber weapons and... They were all really shiny, like chrome weapons. Yeah. What's going on? Just do a it's like freshly version. polished. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's too loud in my ears. Oh, oh, too loud in your ears. Yeah. I mean, but I can turn my gain up on my mic if I'm too low. No, it's red. It's too low. Just no. keep talking. Keep all right. Okay. So, yeah, Richard Gere, I remember that. It was like a love story. Yeah, I well, I mean, it was, it was all awesome about... It was all about Lancelot, and the the least interesting part of the Arthur legend is what yeah, it did was. Did he really? Did he really like betray? Was was did was the undoing of um whatever the hell it's called? Um, I mean, I think according to the story, yes, yeah, is, is like the whole. Oh, sorry, we're working up there. Um, the whole like betrayal of of you know Lancelot and. Yeah. Arthur. Really? Yeah. No. Oh. I mean, I've watched too many movies now that were based on the King Arthur myth. I know what's real and what's not. <laughs> None of them had a green knight. <laughs> not a single one. It's like it's like which which movie in Star Wars was real or or fake, right? <laughs> it's basically arguing over that. We just have Ray turn his mic up a little bit. Uh, do you need me to turn my mic up? Yeah. Good to yeah oh, okay. He, he seems kind of quiet. Whoa. Okay. Whoa. Oh, my hair. Am I, am I too loud or oh your hair's going all over the place? Yeah. Um, gonna, we're gonna get the we're gonna get the gain up. How's how's Kate was how's really that? with me? Is that better? Oh yeah, you sound good. Shabam. Um uh well oh there was something I was gonna um, bring up Ray um yeah. I had this question earlier from someone I was chatting and what do you think what are your thoughts on limited palettes Earth Hitler 1948 <laughs> no um <laughs> limited palettes what do you mean um do you have a favorite do you think it's useful when learning to paint in oils. Just all of your thought, every thought you have in your head about limited palettes, <laughs> everything you've ever thought about limited palettes. Go, two minutes. Well, Go. You, you haven't studied color until you've uh, studied it in the original Klingon. So, <laughs> you just I watched Star know. Trek VI recently? No, I just don't know what's wrong with me today. You know, we lost Christopher Plummer. We should yeah, be talking about that's Star why. Trek VI. That's why. Yeah, seriously. Love and light, CP. Um, Abby Rogue Games has a question. Yes. Yeah. Have you ever painted something as a specific direct response to watching a movie? Um, yes, I have. Totally. Um, and it caused uh, Tyler and I to actually um, uh, come together and start this project where we would stream called Live Brush. And that, what we're on right now. That we're on right now, yeah. What was it that you painted? 
that made you want to do live brush? No, remember we were like, oh, well, we, what was that for? No, uh, that was, was why, that was we actually, watching, yeah. I was watching was, Blade Runner. You were watching um, Alien. Yeah, and then we, I think we were, when we first started, we were like, we can get in some painting practice and paint alt. Wow, that was what I was on. I was painting alt classic, my favorite right. 80s characters. And that's why our, a couple of our first episodes, I think, I think our first episode, I painted Ripley from Aliens, yep. painted Deckard. So yeah, it, it was one it was, shot too. It was basically because we talk about movies so much. Um, movies kind of like fired us to really start this. So. Yeah, and I don't know, man. Mo- you remember my like? Yeah. Movies, movies, kind of focus of that anyway. It's just kind of telling cinematic stories. In yeah. um, creation form. Yeah, and I think I mean, uh, movies have inf- influenced us a ton. Like, I mean, I this whole composition, I'm sure I've seen in a movie. You know, uh, and in terms of lighting, it re- it really informs a lot of my paintings. Um, cinematic lighting, and that's why we we talk about art so much. And you haven't even seen Crawl, dude. I haven't. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay. We'll be friends. <laughs> I don't know, man. You got... <laughs> movies have movies. I, yeah, I have realized that still a, a movie, a movie can tear us apart. Have equates like still. Yeah. I know. I'm sorry. It's a, you know, I mean, I'll get there. I promise. All right. I, I promise. You, you did send me a, a, a crawl uh, gif or gif. What, what, what's the, uh, the I say, you know what? I say gif. I don't care. No, what's the creator of the. Uh, he says gif. He says, he says gif. GIF. Well, then it's gif. Okay, then it's gif. Even right? if he said gif, I would say it was gif because it's graphic. First one is graphic. So we're calling okay. it, calling it so, gif. Oh, no. So you're basically just bad at listening. We're gonna we're gonna bring back an argument that I think it was going on for the past ten years. What? Whether it's GIF or GIF. Well, no, I mean if the owner, if the creator says it's, uh, is it GIF? Then it's GIF. Even if he said it was no. GIF. Pop. <laughs> Question from the Fat Baron. <laughs> yeah, what do you think, Fat Baron? Are there any types of fixative that aren't terrible at preventing smudges in pencil slash charcoal? Oh yeah. I mean, Krylon's, time, Krylon spray fix it is perfect for that. Oh, that's what we used all the time. I still use it too. Seal in a drawing before I do a painting. So if I put a drawing down in graphite, I use Krylon's spray fix. Or it's called workable fixative. Right. I spray that down a couple coats. You get like a semi-gloss finish and then I'll paint... Um, Matte medium over that, but it, yeah, it, if you don't, you the matte medium is going to kind of smear the graphite, so. right? Hold on, keep talking, Tyler. I'm going to shut off. Oh yeah, thing. I mean it. It's sometimes it's a matter of um, fat baron. Sometimes it's a matter of coats. So if you're if you um if you're using the Krylon stuff and you don't put on a nice even. Oh, and you, you kind of need to do a couple if you really want it to stay in place. Um, so give it a try again. And also, you know, if it's really cold outside, it's not going to work very well. So there's a bunch of factors. Um, I know there are some tricks with spray cans, um, especially like Plasti Dip or something for like um, car decals um, where you actually put the can in hot water. Not like boiling hot water, but just warm water, and you let the water um, warm up the can. So if you're trying to spray fix in a cold place, you maybe warm up the can with some water. But um, it should work. I use it all the time, and it's it's pretty amazing. It, what it will do is, if you're trying to spray fix a charcoal drawing as a finish, so that it won't get smeared, um, it will darken everything. So it's going to bring all your values down just a little bit. Um, so be be aware of that. Yeah, I mean, uh, um, do do they still make mist on? Uh, 
That's uh, stuff. The, uh, well, that was the past. Uh, oh, that stuff they don't make anymore. Um, Touch. Ray. Yeah, for vellum or some vellum uh, retouch for uh, photograph. Yeah. So our, we had a teacher who will remain unnamed um, who told us to use this stuff. And he's like, no one really makes it anymore. They're, they're definitely. <laughs> Bill, there you go. Bill, 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 Bill. Mon, 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 Mon. Perfect. perfect. Yeah. Um, like just, so we just had to go, go, we had to go to this little tiny photo <laughs> photography supply shop in, where was it? It was like it was, it was South of Mission or it was on market. Okay. Yeah. Oh no, that's right. You're right. It was South of Mission. It was, it was actually pretty far away. We had to actually, uh, I can't remember. <laughs> it was in San Francisco. Though. But it was like, it was like going into a, a photography shop from the late 1800s. Yeah. Or and, 1993. Um, <laughs> But dude, stuff behind, worked, you know, man. it was like, yeah, everyone, you know, like the guy who helped us was like the comic book guy in Simpsons and but like he was really <laughs> in the cameras and stuff. And like, he was I like, remember hey, that. Would I actually write? do. You know, yeah, I do remember that guy actually. And remember he, that guy? It, he, he was, was like, kind of using this for. Yeah, yeah. He didn't like that like, we were using it for illustration. Unhappy with that. Yeah, he was. Uh, but uh, so the uh, was it, it was a fat baronet asked about the spray fixative, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, smudging is one of those things that um, can drive you nuts. I uh, if you're spraying, you want to spray all that stuff outdoors because it's pretty toxic. Because it's uh, basically got things like bestine, which is like rubber cement thinner, and aerosolized. So. You don't want to breathe, breathe that stuff in. It is poisonous. There so is, many, however, like so many people right inside. Oh, geez. Same. Yeah. They, I, I will say that there is a, um, a non toxic um, spray fixative and it is escaping me right now. Oh, my God. Does it's, it work? It's in a spray. Yeah, it works fine. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah, it does not do, uh, it's got, it's casein based. Uh, which is old school, you know, because what they would do is basically it's like a milk based um, fixative and it just, it just prevents smudging basically. And it does not, however, seal things off in with like in a plastic way, like um, Krylon spray for like actual, like commonly used spray fixative uh, uh, can or does. I, I learned that the hard way. But it, it, it's uh, good stuff. Got a question? Yeah, yeah. Hey, a question from Aaron Rufino. Aaron Rufino. Aaron. Is spray fix really necessary for pencil or charcoal if you plan on putting it in a plexiglass frame? No, I don't think so. What do you think, Taylor? Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, if, if you know it's going to be in there forever, it's fine. Yeah. For, for, for your foreseeable future. I mean, it is just a matter of protecting it. And, and if you don't want to lose, you know, if you don't want us to alter your um, values, um, because it makes it significantly darker. Um, if you don't want to mess with that stuff, then put it under plexiglass. should be fine. I mean, that's what pastel are is too. They spray fix or they put it under plexiglass? They put it under, well, they don't put, uh, they put it under glass. Right. Uh, but um, yeah, they can't spray fix it because it'll, F up their stuff. Nobody likes that. Nobody likes that. <laughs> okay, so we kind of blew you, you. Kind of blew my question. Great. Well, I, 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 I think it's a win-win situation. Then, what do you think, chat? <laughs> so, um, what do you what? Let's talk about limited palettes. Let's, oh yeah, you're let's talk about some limited question. palettes. Okay, okay, okay. Right, 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 right. That's you got right. a favorite? That actually, was a good. That actually was a good question because it allowed me to talk. Um. And only me to talk. Yeah, I'll just let you. Forever. I mean, I have a favorite <laughs> limited palette, so that's why I okay. wanted to ask you. Like, what do you think? Do you have a favorite? Oh yeah. Should we um, should we talk about what they are in general if people don't even know what a limited palette is? Sure. Do you, Do you want to start, or you want me to start? Um, I go mean, for you asked me the question. You're kind of yeah, doing, yeah. Are you one yeah, of those? Yeah. Okay, so is are you one of those types of interviewers? Now I'm going to turn around and look at the camera. Are you one of those types of interviewers 
Tyler, Fact, yeah. I'm looking right back at uh, you. <laughs> I blinked on stuff. I will tell you. Okay, so chat, I will I will say a little pre-production insight. Ty, I don't know if Tyler, I think Tyler can beat most people in a blinking contest because he looks up when he's looking up at his screen he does not blink and i swear half the time i asked i must have asked you how many times did i ask you is your video frozen are you still there <laughs> do you remember that just a master at being really still it's incredible are you are you staring at oh the, i just saw you on the delay on the stream yeah <laughs> you were you were you were yeah it's incredible it just, it just occurred to me i've never seen him blink in two and a half years that we've been together you see hold on activating blink okay that's gotta be so weird kate i didn't see it can somebody clip that yeah i don't think it happened i don't know what you're talking about i blink all the time now f in the chat if you've never seen tyler blink i mean my face is so small in that little tiny window they probably can't even see anything hey they could see plenty they could see enough so okay <laughs> you defended their honor there really fast they can <laughs> see plenty <laughs> We were talking about limited palettes. Is that what we were talking about? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, theoretically. something. Theoretically. Yeah, so, um, well, so what are limited palettes? Uh, they're basically just um, a set of colors that are paints that, uh, that you would pick, uh, colors um, that you would pick that basically um, you would use throughout, exclusively use throughout the creation of a painting. So, and it's only a few colors, um, and that's why it's called limited. So it's only usually a handful, but it depends on who you talk to. Limited is a really broad term. I come, I came to find out. Yeah, I mean, because, like five colors can be valid. Right, right. To to an artist that uses like thirty, but yeah. Um, convenience colors are what all those other colors are yeah yeah i mean some of my limited palettes I, limited palettes are really great because i mean tyler and i were, were trained on limited palettes it's a great way also to when you're learning how to paint um to learn how to mix color uh to uh, and learn how colors interact it's, you really learn a ton uh, when you're forced to create or work with the limited palette because you're forced to create the color rather than picking it at a you know a corresponding tube that approximates the color that you're looking for kind of like you would like a you know color pencils or something like that yeah that's or what I've, I've i mean as like art training i think it's super important for that specific like knowing how to get to a color is so much more like you're crippled if you can't be like i don't know how to make this color and i don't have the color in the tube that's exactly that color Yeah. And, you know, so if you ever, or if anyone's ever interested in making a limited palette, I mean, you could do so many ways to do it. Really easy way of kind of breaking it down of making your own is you, you just grab um, any yellow uh, that you have uh, and pair it with any red and any blue. That's yeah. it. Yeah. And one, one of the standard uh, limited palettes that we had started out with was uh, what's called the Zorn palette. Uh, which is a titanium, uh, and you would need white too. Um, titanium white, uh, the yellow is yellow ochre. The red is cadmium red light. And the blue is actually black. And black ivory black, like right? A, uh, ivory black, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I and never, kinda, you know, it, to be it, honest, it gray. I never really used that palette. What? Uh, we, we used it in portrait. And, uh, uh, didn't we use it in a head painting class? Um, no, so okay, I think because you had the you had that color theory, I didn't yeah. have. Yeah, but we didn't use it in the color theory class. Oh, okay. Because okay, so I was gonna bring up one that I thought we used in Tomutsu's class. Okay. Which was um, your blue is French ultramarine, your yellow is yellow ochre, and then your red is terra ver terra um rosa. Terra rosa? Yeah, so you get like a really earthy. Is that what we used in his class? Yeah, yeah, and um, he had us make chromatic black, so we had burnt umber on there. So. Then titanium buff was our white. 
But, you know, we're getting into that five color thing. White. Titanium buff. I still use it to this day because it was, Tomotsu always used it so that he wouldn't go to, straight to white and he wouldn't get really cocky because it's kind of warm. I don't warm. remember buying a tube of that stuff. I bought like a massive tube. <laughs> Um, and I still use it because it's, it's such a nice way to get like a soft approach to bright white. And because titanium white is somewhat purple, um, titanium buff is, is like almost like a Naples yellow. I mean, it's kind of Naples yellow. I don't know. It's like a really warm white. Yeah. I mean, like if you take, um, Let's see if I mix it. Naples yellow. So this is yellow ochre right here. You take that and you mix it with a little bit of white. And maybe a little bit of uh, cad yellow. Let's see. You can get a Naples yellow. This is what Naples yellow looks like. I don't know if that's showing up. <laughs> well, um, definitely defiant. Um, yeah, it is actually, it's surprisingly. You wouldn't think it, but but titanium white does sit in purple. But so um another great limited palette that I only recently I like using. It's not really even limited. I think it's pretty broad. You can mix anything. Is um and we got I think Ray probably put me onto this. It's from um the Geneva. Um, what's his name at Geneva? Mark Carter. Mark Carter at Geneva. He uses five colors. I love using the palette now because honestly mix almost anything really high chroma magic effect but um it's burnt umber it's um he uses i use alizarin crimson but he uses called um like a really weird red it's a cadmium red deep or something like that oh, it's like rub rubine or something like that anyways um it's a it's like it essentially, and he even says it, it's essentially alizarin crimson. Um, so burnt umber, alizarin crimson, uh, French ultramarine, and then um, add yellow and white. That's all you need. And you can mix just about anything. And the reason why this works, and, and Mark goes over this in one of his videos. Yeah, is, dramixpaint.com. Yeah, definitely check it out. Because I found it really sort of like, it totally changed my palette from what I used to work. But I love using it. And it's it's because your bur your um burnt umber is kind of sitting. What's up? Oh, I thought you were about to say something. I was. I was going to say, could you drop that URL one more time, Ray? Oh, sorry. Uh, drawmixpaint. dot com. So drawmixpaint one word. dot com. Thanks, Ben. <laughs> um. So the the reason why this works is so you have um, you can control you can basically shift your colors around really easy. So you have your blue, and French ultramarine is blue that's sort of on the red side, going towards violet. And then you have your red, which is blizzard and crimson. You have um, your yellow, which is cad yellow. So when you, it, your burnt umber is actually somewhat orange, kind of a muted orange. And then yeah. your um, titanium white is somewhat purple. So... You can shift. I never, I never noticed that. You can shift through that. the color wheel that way. So if you're going to make something lighter, the more titanium white you put into it, the more you're shifting it cooler towards purple. So if you wanted to make something lighter but warmer, you'd use cad yellow. Um, so I, I don't know. I mean, he goes through on his on his um, website about how to mix just about anything. Yeah, and he's on YouTube. Really um, great. And and all the videos. I mean, there's so many. He is incredible in terms of his generosity and sharing his knowledge i mean the i mean you can study privately with him and everything like that but a lot of his core concepts i mean they're all he makes like these well-produced um videos uh where he explains all these things and you can find them on youtube draw mix paint it's incredible incredible uh incredible resource check it out um that's that has been lately my favorite color setups. It's like Rubla, uh, Rypole or something like that. Rypole Red or something. 
because he did used to use it lizard and crimson right so he's doing what he's doing on his side is he's making his own right pigments and mixtures because he he works in like a really slow way so he doesn't want any of his basically dry really fast right. but most of the paints that he mixed up has have a little clove oil in them a little bit of clove oil which makes um i mean ray you know this it makes your oh, paint yeah. basically wet for weeks mm -hmm. and weeks um so he's going in a very slow fashion um it's he's it's called pyrrhal rubine pyrrhal rubine okay um i mean it's basically lizard crimson, but I think I think it's a I think it's slightly warmer than a lizard, and probably more obviously more stable. Yeah, and more stable. Yeah, a lizard crimson is crazy. I don't mean I don't know if any of you guys out there know, a lizard crimson, crimson will crimson. never dry. Yeah, um, you, you'll find like paintings in the Louvre that have thick lizard crimson on them, and they're hundreds of years old, and the that lizard crimson is wet underneath. What do we got going on? Oh man, you're gonna get so many syllables out of me. <laughs> Ray, help me. All of the oh, Rubine. Uh, no, what do I we saw, got? Rubine? Yeah, I, I saw you on the. Uh, I saw you on the delay. Oh, good, good. I got too many windows here, man. I um, got a full on like audio studio here. Just to complete, get, complete, just to attempt with effects. With effects. With effects. Whoa, 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 whoa! Yeah, I did that by myself. I didn't even use an effect. <laughs> <laughs> need the machines they need me um just to plug another thing that uh, mark provides on his website we're just going for sponsors here guys yeah um is <laughs> another thing i love using now is is mark's um geneva's geneva art supplies their um brush dip i don't know if you've gotten any of this yet ray no i have not i'm, I'm planning on it though it for me it's become like a game changer because i I don't know about you. I hate washing brushes. Oh, hate yeah, it. I never wash my brushes. And Ray never washes brushes. I don't even know how that works. Like, uh, doesn't the paint seize up in there? No, nah, man. I got clove oil on my paint. See, there we go. He's got clove oil. Now, the beautiful thing about a Mark's brush dip, and you could probably mix this, but um, I like Mark's mixture as well, is that it's just safflower oil and 2% clove oil. And so when I'm done, uh, what I'm like done painting for the day, I don't, I just wipe most of the paint out of my brush and then I dip it in the brush dip and it's going to sit there and it's not going to let that stuff dry for, I think seven days is probably the max that he recommends, but yeah. it's just like, it means like, okay, so I got to wash my batch of brushes. Um, and I like painting with dirty brushes anyways. So I just have to wash my brush once a week. Um, and I use a lot of dryers, so it ends up being I'm going to wash my brushes every four or five days. Right. Yeah, that's the difference. I, I don't use the – I use Turpinoid Natural, which has uh -huh. a natural, like, um, uh, oil in it. So it, it keeps – it basically just keeps it wet longer so it doesn't dry. And it, oh, okay. Um, and so that's why, yeah. So it, it I, you, I use it to clean my brushes. So uh, I have that in my little brush washer, uh, and that's all I. Uh, so it, it's um, it can it naturally does that. So my brushes oh, stay see. wet, and I and I keep my brushes sealed in my in this little. I have an oil, uh, airtight, uh, container thing. Like, oh, exactly so you like seal them up? Oh yeah. I don't leave okay. them out in the wild. See, mine are out in the wild, and I, um, I don't have solvents out. I have my solvents in the other room, and that's when I whoa. Excuse me. Yeah. We got a question. I'm oh, sorry. There's there's a backlog of questions, and you guys won't shut up. So <laughs> we'll get back to this in a second. Solvents. <laughs> um. All right. X vertebrate asks, do you ever mix fluorescence into your colors, Tyler? I know you were experimenting with with this, right? Um. I was trying to get my hands on a fluorescent so a, a good friend of mine mark pool uh, an amazing artist uh, one of the mark pool. dr mark one of the original magic artists um awesome guy um still doing amazing killer work he he paints in oils but he's actually uh, he was painting these crazy sunsets neon pink 
Like, holy shit, I want that. Um, it isn't made by anybody except for a company that makes water soluble. I don't paint with water soluble oil paints. So, that was very different. Holbein? I think it's Holbein. Yeah. yeah, they make the crazy colors. Okay. I was, I was disappointed because I wanted to use it. You can mix it right with the oils. It's fine. And so it, it will work? Yeah. Oh, you I just was, can't be, you I was just can't that it mix it with, uh, yeah, Craig Nelson does it all the time. Oh, okay. Well, then I'm going to get my hands on that. I thought it couldn't work. Um, but on a side note, you can kind of get there with, uh, have kind of a CMYK setup where I use, um, cobalt teal. Diane. Oh, yeah. You got and me then on that. I love Quinac- that color. Yeah. Cobalt teal, um, quinacridone magenta is the red. Magenta and um, lemon, cadmium lemon, yellow, and those are those three pigments super close, yeah. if not exactly the same as printer uses. So you're trying to mix like higher key, like clouds and subtle stuff like that, where you don't want it to get muddy and dark, and you want to have a lot of chroma, like a lot of color in it. Those three together are amazing, and you can get some really beautiful out of them. Okay, next question. Okay. Uh, Kepron asks, uh, you guys ever mess with painting with the process colors? Process magenta, process blue, process yellow and black. Yeah, that's what, uh, uh, Tyler, you just said that, right? What do you mean? Uh, 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 cyan, uh, magenta. Oh, sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. That, that's um, the setup that I use is what I was just explaining there. Yeah, that, yeah um, you can this get a really... This question didn't come in. This, this question came in like probably three hours ago. Yeah, because we were babbling. We were, yeah. Um, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. You can get a close approximation. It's just really good. I mean, I use it a lot because I'm doing a lot of magic effects, and to get those really high chroma magic effects, I have to use an acrodome. Right. And um, cobalt teal... Like all these really crazy vibrant colors. And it turns out like when you make grays out of those, you get really nice stuff. The clouds and really good atmosphere stuff. Cause they're, oh man, they're just such a great yeah, kind of colors. Great. Yeah, absolutely. I got a, I think I have a cobalt teal right here. Yeah. I, I have a, I have like, I, I went the other day cause I was trying to do something with like blue magical effects. And I bought like every teal that they had. And the lady at Blick was like, you, you really like, um, I don't know why I say the other day, this was, um, <laughs> but, um, the lady's like, you painting something, you painting something teal. <laughs> I was like, yes. <laughs> you like, you like teal, bro. <laughs> but you know, I found the right one and it is a gambling one. Gambling. Old turquoise. I mean, cobalt teal is their cobalt turquoise is pretty good too. It's just a little bit darker value. Yeah, I have that. I have the thalo turquoise. Oh yes, um, I love that one for like I'll use the cobalt teal as like the brighter value, and then the turquoise, yeah, darker value, and those yeah. mixed. Together. They're great. They're really nice additions. Okay, next All question. Right, enough talk. I I don't have another question. I was just reflecting on what a what a turd you have to be to like a painter is buying a bunch of paint and you're like, oh, somebody likes teal. Like, yeah, <laughs> I'm a painter, <laughs> and I gotta have the color. I'm just gonna go squeeze all these out on the sidewalk. <laughs> you never know. Um, I don't know. I probably would. You know, I I, I used to work at Blake Art Materials. Yeah, Ray was, a, was a jerk when he. Because I definitely would ask. I, that, that, you know I would have said that to you, Tyler. Well, yeah, but it would have been me. No, I, I mean before. Jamie I worked there too, didn't she? she? Yeah. Yeah. And you know she don't like you. I know. Keep trying to get on her good side. Known her for <laughs> 10 years. It's not working. 10 years. Time to give up. All right. There, there's no more questions? I mean, we were yeah. harangued. No. All the questions? I, li- I just like to harangue. I do have another question. Yeah. 
from Erin Orfino. And uh, she claims it is a silly question. Okay. Do you think it's easier or harder for artists yes. to choose interior paint colors than the average person? Color causes disagreements in my house. <laughs> I mean, I, my, I have an easy go-to. It's always like, going to be some kind of gray. And the, the only question is, do we want it to be a warm gray or a cool gray? <laughs> Uh, for me, no, nah, I don't, never really have any color disagreements. Uh, it's more color combinations. I'm really fickle with that, but I mean, I don't really care. I don't care enough to, to, to get into the, the arguments. I have it with my parents sometimes to like, I'm more critical of, of their color choices. I'm like, what? This is, this is, doesn't even make any sense. You know, <laughs> you're running a yellow split and a half, like a quarter of a blue split in here. What are we doing, folks? I'm going to message your parents separately. I'm going to say, hey, guys, and I'm going to recommend the most out-of-color harmony. Which you want to do. Possible. <laughs> Paint Ray's old bedroom. I know. These colors. Background. But if you, I just want to say, uh, limited palettes are, I, I can't, I, I love them. And yeah, actually, uh, teach a, a, my smart school classes, um, you know, the class of, for smart school that's uh, coming up. Um, if you want to learn about them, I actually go through a limited palette setup. So we, we actually, we do, we go from monochrome to Zorn to um, very close to, um, like a Tamutsu palette, Tyler. Oh, okay. Like, yeah. So, and then from there we go actually to Mark Carter at the end without the, okay. so we, we do cat. Actually we do, uh, it's actually a Kevin McPherson palette. who is a really great landscape painter. Um, cat yellow light, cat red light, and ultramarine blue. And then you could use burn number if you want to, to get the darker darks. What was that one that um, Jeremy Mann was using? Like Payne's gray, Naples yellow. Oh yeah, he's crazy. Something else. Yeah. So like Jeremy's probably like example. sap green or something. Well, he's a classic example of somebody who like okay, he understood the fundamental of it. Like he's like, I get that it's just a yellow, red, and a blue, and he understood and now the split complementary color schemes. Yeah. And um, he would mess around with that all the time. Um, I remember we had a landscape painting class that Jeremy Mann was in. Yeah. And like Ray and I, I don't think we'd ever painted a landscape and we have Jeremy Mann in the, taking the class with us. Yeah. As an independent study, I think. Yeah. And, and like at this point in Jeremy Mann's career, he was a master landscape painter. Yeah. It wasn't even was fair. Really like he would put stuff up and the teacher who will remain unnamed would, um, come down he'd come down to the end and be like this one's great who did this one and then he would see it was jeremy and he'd be like oh and he just wouldn't even bill. critique it remain hey, mon, unnamed. Mon, mon, mon. you guys yeah, can't bill, do bill mon, 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 mon. just just because i'm excited to press the wolf button doesn't mean you should deprive people of the legend of bill mon are you afraid of the wolf tyler i mean be honest do you fear the wolf Very, man <laughs> Hey, hey, we have a question from the chat. Uh, it's for Tyler. Do you fear the wolf? Fear the wolf. <laughs> yeah, wolves uh, are dangerous, kids. Capron asks, this is a great question. You guys are going to love it. Rosetta said he liked to think his paintings have a beginning, middle, and end. Just fascinating. What's the most amount of storytelling either of you has had to do on a painting assignment? Oh. I mean, oh, this is one of my favorite things about illustration. It's free. I think I see what Frizzetta's doing there. He's probably doing that with like motion and lines through his paintings to tell yeah, that who story. Knows what he's, who he was, Frank was thinking. Because his paintings never had an end. He was like picking away at his paintings forever until he couldn't couldn't be alive anymore and pick out that him anymore. <laughs> but um, well, full disclosure, I mean, like Tyler, are you a huge Frank Frizzetta. Oh yeah, we love we love Frizzetta. Yeah, yeah, like one of those artists that's like painting, but um. 
Yeah, no, I like to do that in store. I, I think one of my favorite storytelling pieces was I did a, a Volo's, um, what was it called? Volo's Guide to Mon cover for D and D. And I remember spending hours just trying to get the gesture and like tilt of the main giant in the image, his shoulders to make it seem like he was leaning in to hear something. I was really trying to tell that, that, that moment. The, the little halfling in front of him has a, has something important to tell him. Oh, I remember that piece. That was great. Yeah. And, and he's trying to keep the other, the big giant is trying to keep the other giants from like eating this guy. Um, so he's, He's got one hand up to like keep the giant behind his back. But that would that took like getting that story moment took so much subtlety to get like the subtle gesture in a hand. And when you hold a hand up to tell someone to like, hold on a sec, that's like a very specific hand gesture. Um so I had to I took like tons of reference of that like slack feel of hand that's Sh like hold on a sec. You just um, went around shushing people and taking reference of it. I went into churches and I would just go right up to the front while he was giving the homily or something. And I'd be like, Oh, hold on Give me a second. Oh, be quiet. Like I'd stand in front of him. Didn't go so well. Didn't yeah. go so well to churches. Went to Starbucks. Uh, yeah. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? Welcome. To in the middle of my order. Uh, yeah. W one second. Hold on a second. Stop talking. Stop talking. Hold on. Um, anyways, that, that it was trying, I was trying to get those story moments. Just with like body gesture. I don't know if that answers the question, but I, it's a fun challenge. Uh, give it yeah. a try. Try right? It's it's so easy to describe a sequence. You know, if you're getting um, if you're getting a art description from a art art director, a lot of times you'll get a sequence, and now you have to pick the moment. And there's three options. You know, you can pick right before the moment happened right as the moment's happening and right after the moment's happening. And those are three very specific types of story that you're going to tell. Right. Sometimes, you know, when you're telling right after something happened, you're talking about the consequence, what just happened, all of that. Uh, right. And, and you're also, you know, and that also changes a lot of times too, when you're trying to, I mean, I know you've done, a ton of these types of illustrations where like they're like book covers where like you have to tell the multiple storylines in one image, you know, or capture that, you know, the feeling of that. And, um, that's, you know, that le leads, le lends a subject, you know, a whole entire, uh, in many ways, a really different way of telling a story in other ways, kind of the same. Um, yeah, no, totally. Yeah, I remember it's, I did. Right, go ahead. I did. I did a piece for like the, the New Yorker where I had to do that. Like it was based off a play called The Fabulous Miss Marie, and I had all these people standing. Uh, it was like about um, African American uh, community during the uh, in L.A. an affluent one uh, during the Watts riots, and yeah, the, piece. thanks, man. Um, so you know, you had to get the the feeling of like. Um, them trying to, the whole thing is about them basically trying to party the, you know, uh, trying to forget what's going on in Watts during the riots and trying to distance themselves while all while feeling regret about it at the same time. And you have to strike a balance between like that, you know, how the hell do you explain that in one, one piece, you know, and that's what like, and so, you know, it's a different type of, uh, of thing, but you know, you, everything down to the gestures, and like Tyler was saying, like you, you do a lot of work. Like, I think this is what I, why I love like storytelling pieces like this or like that, or just like an illustration in general is because you can have, see, the thing is like drawing, painting, all the stuff that we talk about, they're really just prerequisites and everyone you know, that is successful in our industry can draw and paint and understands color, you know, understands the foundations, has a really good handle on it. Um, and the thing that really separates everyone uh, apart is really kind of the, 
the storytelling aspect of it. Like how strong of a storyteller are you? Because you can have the most beautifully rendered piece of armor in the world, but if it really, if it doesn't tell a good story or a compelling story, then it, it's, it's just going to be dismissed. Um, yeah. It's like, you got, we have all the tools. Have all the tools. Now it's like, how do you make it a compelling image now that you have right. all those tools? That's when stuff gets, that's where stuff gets nuts. And I remember like we, you and I kind of came uh, to it. Actually, you know, I remember when we, <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm like, I'm going to mention Bill's name again. So we were in oh. Bill Mon's class. It was this, <laughs> this, uh, this class called uh, narrative painting, narrative, uh, no, narrative illustration. <laughs> Sorry, my my Zoom unmute button is broken, and Aww. I'm not. I can't. I have to scramble. I'm sorry. Anyway, I'm so sorry, guys. Okay. In your story, I'll be better. About Remember, that. we're gonna replace. So we have another question here. Uh, it's for Kate. Do you fear the wolf? Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, no so, <laughs> so, so it was our first illustration class. Do you remember that class? I remember that class. Remember you did the 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 Caesar. Oh and the my Caesar, god! And then oh, did, right? I did okay. a series of garbage illustrations. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You know, yours looked like the Sistine Chapel in, uh, in compared to mine's, and so <laughs> you know that was our first class. We we were success. I thought we were pretty successful in our own class, like in our skill based class, head drawing, head painting. Like we did good work, you know. And then when we came to illustration, it was like what. You know, like I got to tell a story. Oh man, where do I put the camera? And like, you're given all these control, this yeah. control. It's like leveling up. Before. Oh yeah. And you realize that like, oh, I'm not as good as I thought I was. I could render a head, but can I, what can I tell a story about two people talking? How do I even do that? Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, yeah. And how do uh, I get that across? Like, how do I, right. and, and I don't know, we were presented with interesting challenges where it's like, okay, you got, you know, we've learned how to paint everything, right? We've we've been told about how to paint and deal with color and all these other right. things. And then we're we're now it's like, okay, so now you have these dimensional book cover where where the text has to go here and you need to leave that space open for the text and you need to have this many figures and now you get all these constraints and you're like, Okay, now I have to culminate everything that I how the hell am I gonna do this? Right. It ain't yeah, easy. Uh, it, it ain't easy. But, you know, like like uh, with anything, it just takes a lot of practice and, t and study, good studying. And then, uh, and then it becomes, you know, that's where the fun sort of kicks in when you can basically just, you've studied so much, you've done it so much that, you know, it's kind of automatic and you're just living in the moment of creating the piece. Yeah. You know? And it's I all think about at, the piece. You know? At first, it's terrifying. Oh, yeah. This is, I'm going to fail at this. Totally. But as you do more and more, it's, you know, I don't think, I think Ray and I completely agree on this. It's like repetition. The more Absolutely. and more and more stuff, better and better. No way around it. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and you just have to really marry yourself to really good examples too, you know. Uh, of just solid storytelling. I think that's, that's, that's key too. Cause I think in school, I don't know. Um, I don't know if you agree, Tyler, but I, you know, there in school, there were people that were in our classes learning the same things we did, but I just found, I just felt like they just didn't have really good art mentors to look up to like artists, you know, like good influences to help guide them, you know? Yeah. I th I think I'm I think I remember some of those people. Yeah. It was it was almost like a, a an example in the importance of learning about all the artists that are out there. Like almost I'm trying to find the best way to say this. It's like Well, it's like working It is they, learning art history. In a vacuum. Yeah, yeah. they're working in a vacuum. And that was the problem. Yeah, yeah, that's it. They they're in a vacuum, and it, it's it's I don't know. It's boring to say and cliche to say, I guess, but it, they didn't have like a great grasp on art history. Like you really got to know the 
the people that came before you, even if you don't want to paint like them, right. good to know who's out there, worked in the field, who was considered great in the field. Um, and that, I think it that leads best to, interest, right? yeah, it serves your best interest. And then you start finding artists you really like, and then you start right. borrowing from those artists, a little like, oh, I like how that artist treats color, or I like how that artist treats you borrow from those people that aids your education ability to, to paint really i felt like there was another question coming up so i got like i didn't Real want quiet. to interject yeah, yeah too quiet can guys, actually can you guys hear me ringing the doorbell no we got no. yeah i heard the heard the, the doorbell ring right now okay i got another question for you from agavazi have you done or have you considered doing animation for video medium, animation, stop motion, cartoons, et cetera, whether for a job or a personal project? I haven't, but I know Ray has. Yeah. So uh, I uh, went to grad school where Tyler and I uh, became fast enemies yeah. um, uh, for 3D animation. I wanted to work for Lucasfilm or Pixar. And so that's why I went to the, the Pixar sp uh, specifically, you know, because uh, I wanted to be a character animator. So, um, yeah, I, uh, I love animation. I absolutely adore. I think it's one of the great mediums. I really like painting, too, and I like the control that I have over it. And, um, you know, uh, for, for jobs, I've never really asked to do that, obviously, because I, I don't really have a portfolio, uh, a, like a rounded out por professional portfolio that appeals to a given marketplace. But I did do um, an animate, I did do an animation for my thesis project where I animated, it was like a basically a stop mo motion charcoal drawing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have uh, that. Thanks. Post that somewhere. Yeah. I'm like I the do. live brush. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's really, I mean, it, it's, it's all about the, Benjamins. Uh, it's about, that's the title of the, the <laughs> title of the animation. The yeah. The animation. Now as part of my thesis, I did a painting series of a visual essay of, um, of my family after the, uh, in Puerto Rico, after the death of my grandfather, I went back and I interviewed everyone and all my family members. And I, uh, I did paintings about them and they all come, came with a little story. And so the, the animation itself was uh, a almost served as almost like a sketchbook, um, a telling of me sort of uh, going through and interviewing people. It's not narrated. It's, it's just silent. It's got sound, but it's, um, it's more kind of abstract, very fine arty. Um, but I, I really enjoyed the process. Um, but I love stuff like Richard Williams and, you know, the nine old men and, um, Man, I, yeah, I love, you know, I love really solid, well done animation. So, you know, um, yeah. Um, I'm going to, um, I was, I was talking to, uh, to, to a person about this. Um, actually, one of my, but you were going to say something? Oh, no, no, go ahead. I, I'm going to say something when you're, when you're done. Oh, okay. Um, one of my, uh, uh, actually, one of the uh, students I'm working with uh, in uh, one of my private classes uh, is an animator animation director actually and an incredible artist and so uh, we were talking a lot about that you know uh, the parallels between animation and, and drawing and painting and it's all the same stuff it's just applied a little differently and obviously one's meant for motion when one not necessarily so um and so i i just um yeah i just find it really really a really interesting uh um yeah, uh, an incredible uh, thing. But I mean, yours, Tyler. In your case, though, your art, you've lent artwork that has been animated, though, right? So, um, yeah. I mean, you I've, were kind of directly involved in that. I mean, in various jobs, I guess, some like cinematic or something. I really didn't play any role in like creating a three D model that needed to be rigged and animated. I just did like a concept that that ended up making it stage right. so i don't but have you, a, i don't have a ton of exposure to animation but you've had artwork that's uh, made, been made into like a, almost like a motion comic oh um yeah i think yeah but like it's magic stuff I, there's some people like to take the cards and motion comic 
But they, I mean, they weren't no, initially done magic, for that. Yeah, but they, right, but they they were done on layers. So one yeah, the, I remember one of the sure. things was done on so many layers that they actually were able to take it and then kind of cut it and almost make it like a paper um, doll yeah. and, and right. animate that. That's know? called um. I mean, th that's the same method that they use in in cell animation. It's just parallaxing. So I I did all of the um. I did all the layers. The best one would be like this piece I have in my portfolio called Mad, Mad Avison. It's this angel and all of the aspects of her, like her arm, her weapon, her body, her hair, her wings, they're all on different layers so that they can be parallaxed. And what that means um, in animation, parallaxing is when you have a whole bunch of items on different layers and you move them at different rates and it creates the illusion. Either... Um, objects in the distance moving horizontally or it creates it can create the illusion of objects coming at you or swaying in the wind all, all those kinds of things can be parallaxing and um yeah i've i've painted a bunch of things on layers in photoshop for that specific. and they just take all the different layers and then they um probably use after effect right anything about how they do it but um they just move them all at different rates it creates a super cool effect. If you've ever seen, um, I think probably one of the greatest animated films of all time, um, Akira, they do it a lot in the background when they're that opening sequence, when they're riding around on their bikes, all those shots of, of Neo Tokyo, those are all parallaxed images where there's a whole bunch of cityscapes that artists painted and then they move them all at different rates. So it gets high velocity. Isn't it? Yeah, and they, and they took that. That was a language that Japanese anime, um, animation, I should say, um, created from looking in film. Yeah, <laughs> it's like insane. how do we get that illusion? And they right. they found a really great method. And we can't. We don't have a lot of money, and we don't have a lot of space to actually make shoot actual films. So we but we can draw. So how do we make this work? And boom, right? We have Japanese they, animation, which is incredible. But they've Akira's done that. nuts because a lot of that, right. like they're slow, they had slow motion stuff. Like, you know how long that takes to draw? I know. Like, it's just insane. Like, ah, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Well, and they have, they, you know, like, um, I think another great example of that attempting to recreate a shot, film shot, is um, in Princess Mononoke, the, the Miyazaki film. Uh -huh. they, they, they create a pan shot. So a pan in a movie would be, you know, I have a, I have a camera on a crane and I'm going to follow up above the figures, follow pan over the ground and follow the figures from above. And the only way to do that in Japanese animation is you have to paint all of the ground that you're going to move the camera over. So there's that scene in the beginning um, where he's riding his antlered steed mm -hmm. jumping down a mountain. Um, and so what they had to do is they had to have someone paint the whole mountain face and then, they just panned the camera down this giant long painting. And then they have the cell animators animate the character going down that, animating the shadow that followed him. And you get that whole illusion of, you know, camera on a crane panning over a rock face, following a figure down it. It's just super cool. Um, that's another amazing animated film if you want to see all those techniques. They do a lot of really cool parallaxing. In Miyazaki, man legend and it's just like have you ever seen out the it was like uh, uh this is the mountain of dreams and madness i think it's called the documentary on this oh no Legend. no oh it's, it's so good it's like there he's doing the um it's, the, he said it was his last film but i don't know if that's actually true oh he already i think he already came out of retirement yeah <laughs> um this is about the the person who did, uh, and it was about the, the man who designed the zero, the Japanese zero. Oh yeah, so it, what's it called? I know what you're talking about. Yeah, wings of something. Yeah, no way to look it up. Database, find all the. It was Iron Eagle. Iron Eagle Two, what it was Dude. with Louis Gossett Jr. That was it. Was it the second one he was in? I think, he, I think, I think like, Louis Gaz Jr. is in all of them. Yeah. yeah. No, uh, spoiler alert. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. 
I mean, I liked I liked Iron Eagle too because they got to hang out with the Russians and make it okay, just like Rocky Four. You could change, and they I could change. The Cold War. Yeah, they, we always solved the Cold War by becoming friends with the Russians. That's how we solved it. Maybe everybody. all of us could change. Hey, that was excellent. Uh, Agavazi made a joke that I just want to call out before I go back to your questions. Parallaxing is when you're paragliding, but in a recliner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Love that. Okay, but also, Jacob is sweet. Tyler, on your Google Jacob. search profile, there is a section called books, and it says Hell Island. Did you write a book? I did not, but um, Tyler, did you write a book? I have a first of all question one. I have a Google profile. God, what's on it? Um, and number two, it says uh, right here. I'm, I got it right here. It says right here, Hell Island, and then it also says you are afraid of the wolf. Oh yeah. First of all, where is this Google profile of mine? Um, and I did so right out of school. One of my earliest jobs. Was illustrate in black and white a novella called hell island oh that was the one with the gorillas yeah it was the one with gorillas yeah um, it was I like these that. these like gorillas that were like i mean it was a lot like congo to be honest but it was rare. the gorillas were like super smart and like <laughs> weaponized um we can't legally say congo oh can't say congo sorry michael Crichton's estate coming after us um yeah so i did a series of black and white illustrations in this like very pen and inky style. Yeah, I remember that. It was crazy. Yeah. 15. And everything you can think of, like battle scenes, like aircraft, of like helicopters and airplanes and gorillas. You use, I remember you, you use like a, a SketchUp for a, like a truck. Yeah, one of the right? shots, one of the shots was like the a truck like flying off the aircraft carrier with all these gorillas on it. So I found a truck in SketchUp and I like basically put it at the right angle and use that. I found like a an AR fifteen in SketchUp and I did like a, a shot of their equipment. Um it's god damn, that was a very, very weird. Jacob's um, going deep. I don't know going where deep in the archive. Where is this? <laughs> hey, you know what, Jacob? You know what I say to you? I'm gonna turn to the camera. Keep digging. Okay. I want, I, yeah, keep digging. But yeah, anyways, it, it's a, you can probably get it. It was, um, it's by Matthew Riley. It's called Hell Island. It's a little novella and it has all my little crummy right out of school drawings in it. And they're, they were printed way too dark. Um, oh, I didn't see the printing of it. Yeah, way too dark. But this is before I even knew. Like now I know that things are going to print dark. And I've known basically since then. Um, so almost everything I send in, I up the levels on pretty significantly. So it looks like blown out on my screen, but I know it's going to look fine on, in print on their end. Yeah, it looks I mean, like, oh man, you can actually just go to Google books and go to hell Island. And it looks like it just has the whole book and you and can see oh, some my, of my, you can see some of my illustrations and really? it's so bad. <laughs> did, did they rewrite uh, Matthew's name out of it and just put you as about the author? I mean, it says by by Matthew Riley and Tyler Jacobson, which I've never written a book. Hey, you co-wrote it. That's what but it says. I got Google. a writing. I got a, a writing credit, which is nice. this is this just just in. This just this in. just in. <laughs> this just in. I wrote it. It's like 150 a hundred and fifty pages or something. I'll take I'm credit for it. I need I'll to. take credit. I'm a writer. I need to write. Do, do, do you know what the quote's from? Right. That you're a writer and you need to write? No. I'm a writer. I need to write. It's just, I'm the only one that's seen it. It's, it, it's an HSD HBO special. Oh, my God. Not the movie, though. No, no, not the movie. The, the HBO thing. Oh, man. I got to watch I'm a big Tenacious D fan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is like early, early. That, but that's it. That's all I got for that. Okay. I, I'm not going to spoil it for you. Thanks for bringing it. <laughs> what? You're muted. muted. How about now? Yes, good. Yep. Great. Okay. Ding dong. 
Question from Mary Rufino. Have you ever loved a pose in your reference, but it didn't perfectly match the pose or storytelling in your original thumbnail slash idea? Yes. Oh yeah. And I often, if I have a really good pose in my sketch, I tend to go with that. I tend to throw the reference out. It's just, I don't know. I, I just tend to, um, I tend to, to opt with the energy from my, my loose little tiny sketch. I want to keep that energy. So I, I like get reference for like the head and hands and put that a really energetic pose and not try and force the, uh, the reference, the reference I took to fit into it. Yeah. Sometimes um, you'll do a really dynamic drawing and a human body can't even move that way. Exactly. But it looks good. So you just keep it. Yeah. I, I tend to make the reference fit the, the draw, uh, the ref, uh, the drawing itself. So I will literally slice up my reference so that it, uh, John Foster style. I actually got this from a video of John Foster talking about this oh, okay um, and slice yeah it like and like just everything. pasting it over your sketch so that yep. like you get the you basically get the fidelity of the folds or whatever in that area exactly. but then yeah totally i've done exactly. that exactly and whatever doesn't work i just i won't use it you know just don't be a slave to reference yeah you're hey. in control hey question from nick deluca 96 hey nick your guys' opinions on using video for reference for an illustration to get a better sense of motion. Do it. Oh, yeah. yeah totally man. do it. That's what David Grove did. He got all of his reference from movies. I mean, well, some of it, a lot of his reference, some, some, a lot of his reference from movies, not all of it. He took, a, he was an incredible photographer. He took reference all the time himself. But um, yeah, that stuff is, is good stuff. Yeah. And, and like to understand motion, it's so useful. You know, it, it's, you know, if you're trying to do a horse and you don't have a great reference of a horse, so you're going to try and make a lot of it up. Look at videos of horses moving because they move really specifically. And it's easy to break that in your drawing to do, to do a pose that just doesn't, that a horse could never do and it'll look really right. funky. So yeah, like look at video of stuff. Um, that's how Disney animators worked constantly. They always had video of the motion so that they could oh, replicate yeah. it. And it's a great way to get, I'll do it sometimes like you take like high resolution video and just like flap a fabric around and just go through the frames and find like the that cape. Um, but it also gives you some idea of, of what made the motion. Yeah, it's a great thing to study. Totally recommend it. I'll do it right now. I'll do it hey, right now. I love this question. Do it right now. Agavizi asks, where did you eat while attending art school in San Francisco? I'm in Oakland and would love to support some restaurants that fed starving artists back when they were starving. Whoa, nice. Uh, oh, crazy. Where did we used to eat? Oh, man. Um, we used to eat all right, two places. A couple of places. Oh, yeah, the Flapple place. I, I don't remember that one. That was, that was uh, Graham, Graham Ross. Uh, that was his, that was his big falafel place. I think it was, Ross, was awesome. I think, um, I think that was when we were at Powell and like, we had to have yeah. a few classes that we didn't. Right. Uh, th there was, <laughs> uh, was it called Rico's? Oh, over by the um, police station. The, the burrito place. Yeah. Burrito place. Yeah. yeah. Was it Rico's, um, right? It was across the street from Chestnut. In, in in North Beach, yes, yes, uh, not near the police station. The one that's over uh, at the corner of um, what is it? It's the corner of Chestnut, Lombard, Chest, Chestnut, Chestnut. And, and, yeah, yeah, Chest. But it's like at that super corner. It's like the corner of Lombard, Chestnut. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Taylor yeah, yeah. and Columbus. Right. <laughs> it's like <laughs> right. Yeah, it's a really weird. Yeah, I don't even know if There's, that's there anymore. But yeah, we used to go. That yeah, that. that's the other thing is y'all something for the audience to know is that you guys were in art school like a whole generation of time ago yeah was, excuse you excuse you nothing <laughs> I, just wanna, no. I just want to point that out yeah but don't no, this is th these places <laughs> yeah, are but, <laughs> but but we did eat at um we ate at this is a, an amazing place that is still there and has an absolutely hilarious name it's kennedy's 
Indian curry house yep. and Irish pub. Boom. He ate there a lot. Kennedy's Indian curry house and Irish pub. You, this is true. It was a full on restaurant, Indian restaurant. Okay. Good. In, I mean, I thought the Indian really good Indian great. food. Yeah. And with decor and everything. And the bar was a full on straight up Irish pub that poured a hell of a Guinness. That's yeah, the best they, Guinness in San Francisco, period. Because that I could was, find. Because the pint was it's unheard of. On mon- it was on Mondays, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we, would, like I, we would often go there and then I think we would just go to class after. After having many Guinnesses. <laughs> no, it's not true. I'm just joking. It's not true. It was always, it was always, it was, don't drink a paint um, or do if it helps you. Um, but um, no, we never did that, but we did do it after class. But we'd also went to this place that I don't even think is there anymore either. Is um, It's down on, off market called um, Rotors. It was like a German Wait, Schroeder's is gone? I don't think it's there. I think it was bought and now it's like a oh. fake, like a really crappy fake German bar, um, what? beer garden as opposed to it was pretty authentic going there. That's, yeah, because everybody there German was German. It was, on, it was like on front and market, I think. Wait, it's gone? I don't know. I thought it was gone. Last I heard, I thought it was gone. It was there the last time we were there. What, like 20 years ago? <laughs> It was right. Exactly. Um, hey. Anyways, really good German place. We drank a lot of. A lot. And now it's gone. Ding dong. Mm-hmm. dong. It was right. Kepron asks, hey guys, ever mess with 3D software for photo reference or physical props? Yes. Yeah, we, we are like, I mean, that is something that I need to get into hardcore. Um, I. So, Tyler, you go first on this. Yeah, so I do use a lot of it, especially for, like, figures and stuff. I've never been great at hiring models. and So but you have. So but you I have, have but I've done it. I've done it, and um, I've had fun with it sometimes, but other don't times like uh, I you don't like it as much. I just don't like it as much. Um, so I use a number of different things. I actually have these little Hot Toys figures. But that's not 3D. I mean, they are 3D in reality. But um, the other 3D stuff I'll use is um, oftentimes I'll build scenes in SketchUp. And then I will use, there's this website called Anatomy 360 where you can download yeah, like dude. little head packs and it has like a simple light rig built into it. So I, I'll use that for just like simple face out. And then lately I've been messing around with them. Um, as poser and that has been super fun i've learned a lot in that um you can do tons of poses and there's all kinds of content that you can download various like an infinite amount of body types and yeah facial features and and clothing and stuff clothing and and you can you know create it's really simple stuff but it works really well i have fun with it Yeah, that's that's uh, I, I've messed around with Daz, and I'm trying to get into. Um, I need to get into Blender. I've been messing with Blender a bunch. You, do, yeah, no, I mean, not recently. I would love to though. I mean, I have done tutorials and done stuff and messed around with things and showed you renders that I was doing, and um, you know, uh, but I really need to get back back in there because I, i'm seeing all these artists i mean you, you you know a bunch of people that use it uh a friend of mine adrian myshack who worked for bungie on destiny and stuff he exclusively used under for like everything he does all the hard surface yeah and uh i just uh um was actually watching this great talk um by uh um by an artist by the name of john nymeister do you know john Oh. You met? Did you meet him? Maybe. So he he works at High Res uh, uh, Studios, the the game studio. I met him at maybe a Lightbox and, or something. And so um, 
he's actually doing, he was the next artist at, at uh, Studio Bridge, that, uh, um, that thing I did for Visual Arts Passage, which you should go okay. check out. I mean, I have, a, I have a link for it. You can get terrible, like I'm terrible with names, so I probably met him, and I'm sorry. You don't remember anyone. You barely remember me and Kate, as it is. Yeah, so, I know your name. Uh, <laughs> I know your name, Frank. Uh, Frank. Um, so, uh, John, so you can watch this. You can watch all of this stuff on demand because all, all of these lectures are live, and he's every month they have a new artist. And... Uh, they it basically you get they, you get a lecture uh, of their work, their history, and then um, their process. You learn all about the process. You actually see a demo live, and uh, so I you can see actually mine, my demo, you know my my thoughts about process and everything like that. All of that's there, and it's four Mondays out of the month. But um, John's uh, the featured artist, so you can actually catch him live this coming Monday. Uh, and um, there's a link there so you can get like a two week free trial. And then, uh, so you could actually watch it and you can watch stuff on demand. Okay. The reason why I'm saying this is so that when you go do, you do see it, you're able to see this, you see what I'm talking about. John uses blender to set up, basically block out his, his work. Uh, and I think it looks great. And, and like he messes around with like basic lights, but then he uses that as a basis to go off of and, um, and he combines that with this exactly what you're doing, Tyler. Like he combines it with this sketch, and he uses the, the energy of his sketch and the information that he comes from from the 3D render, along with like building other uh, references for like hands. He shoots photo reference for hands and things like that. Um, and he produces this really beautiful, beautifully done work. Um, and so it, it's just it just goes to show you like any tools just use all the tools possible to create things. Like don't think that you have to just like, you know, make it up out yeah. of nowhere. And that's the exact kind of stuff I would like. Building scenes out in Blender. I, I just like the idea of building your own reference. Yeah, me too. Like James Gurney would actually build a physical model, photograph that. <laughs> but with digital tools, like you can create, a million different kinds of lighting scenarios. Most of them have sky domes. Right. You can get any latitude, any yeah, time, um, any longitude, any anything you want. Um, it's even Daz has that built. Yeah. So to be determined. The only reason why I haven't used 3D particularly is because my gallery stuff doesn't require me to do it yet. The stuff, the type of work I'm doing. Um, I do do a ton of st stuff, ton of work on the photographs that I take as I take a bunch of photographs, but I, I also just take, you know, I'll spice together different photo references all the time. This is, this piece is uh, spicing together a couple of different references that I took. That could be really interesting though. Make pretty crazy, fantastical or something. Yeah, man. Incorporate that into gallery work. Right. Just be like, yeah, I went there and I photographed that. <laughs> so you just want me to lie <laughs> and then get caught and be exposed, right? Yeah. Because you know, this is this is not recorded. So but they'll think, never know. Dude, but think about the think about the exposure, man. And he presses <laughs> good press. <laughs> yeah, it'll be a it'll it's it you know, bad press is good press, as they say. <laughs> oh my god. It's like uh the fall of rape. <laughs> He oh, used really? digital tools. Is this, is this thing on? Oh, yeah. Can you hear my ding dong? Yeah, yeah. Can you hear my ding dong? Okay. So you guys have grown acclimated to my ding dong. And so <laughs> now I think that you hear my ding dong and you, and you think, I'm just going to keep talking. And then I don't know if it's working. Keep saying ding dong. Hey. We, we did not hear your ding dong. You don't hear my ding dong? No. You're not hearing it. All right, I'm gonna ding dong quickly. Okay, ding dong. Jacob is sweet. Asks, do you both have trouble with your work posting super dark on your social media? It's been driving me nuts. Okay, wait. the The filter, I couldn't really understand that. Yeah, that hey, question. Uh, P. P. V. Herman's uh, <laughs> deeper sounding uh, cousin. Can you put Kate back on the phone? Yes, yeah. because this yeah. new Kate is unintelligible. <laughs> <laughs> 
Jacob or a swish. I did like that. The, there was one part of it where you're like, Jacob, a sweet, which is Jacob. If you get a new artist name, that's it. Jacob, a sweet. Well, it's how like is it actually pronounced? A apostrophe. Jacob, a sweet. I don't know. No, a. No, it's like a. Jacob, a sweet. Yeah. Jacob, a sweet asks, <laughs> do you both have trouble with your work posting super dark on your social media? It's been driving me nuts. Oh yeah, it's it's a weird like struggling with the filters that social media has. I tend to find a um saving an item as like a PNG. Yeah. Um holds up a lot better like through Facebook's the web crunch. Heard that in 10 years, Ray. Yeah, so the uh yeah, uh, PNGs work great. That's my that would be my recommendation. And they they kind of preserve your digital color space a lot better. Almost yeah. all the images I post are PNGs. Fun fact, PNG stands for preserve natural good art. Oh, how's that pronounced? Is it pronounced? Pinge. 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 Pinge file. It almost got me on that one. I'm not gonna lie. So close. Dude, I mean, right. JPEG is like joint photographers, something, something. Tim's photography. Joint photographers. <laughs> Let's just make up what they are. No, I'm. No one's gonna that's know. What I just did. In 20 years, no, everyone's gonna think that that's what PNG stands for in 20 years. No one's gonna know. Right. The only thing that everything will be destroyed except for this one podcast. Yeah. I mean, this one stream uh, video. I mean, I'm machine. You know, nothing's left. Hey, you know, did, can I, did Orders. I tell you about this? That we, I went, we went to school. I mean, a buddy of mine's name was Matt. Oh my God. I can't remember Matt's last name, but he worked as a PA on the time machine. Whoa. Uh, the guy Pierce time machine. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. hell yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, and so it's probably good. I don't, um, well, yeah. So it wasn't a, well, he said this in a public space, so I guess it would be okay. Uh, he said it was not the greatest of, um, of experiences. Let's just put it that way. He had, apparently had to, they had a scene with a bunch of like, they were going to fly out of a, he basically had to, you know what? I probably shouldn't share this online. So, but right. uh, yeah. Great yeah. setup. Dude. Yeah. Great it was, setup. yeah. Story though. <laughs> Man, I gotta tell you this great. You know what? <laughs> I probably shouldn't yeah. share it. I probably shouldn't uh, share it. Uh, Savvy Rogue, by the way, says that it's pronounced Pung, like hitting a large gong. <laughs> uh, and that is definitely how we're pronouncing it now. Chat is, oh Tyler. yeah. The chat is batting a thousand today. My yeah, the chat goodness. Is, is came to play. Hey, real question. All right, listen, listen for my ding dong. Did it work? No. Oh my god, ding dong broken. Come Are on. you my my gong? Nothing. No, no, yeah. My no. Bill oh. Mom? Not even Bill Mom? Oh my god. I kind of heard the wolf there. Like really, it's like playing low or something. Yeah. Weird. Okay, well, whatever. Aaron Rufino, ding dong. Aaron Rufino has a question. Have polarizing filters ever made your paintings look burnt or too contrasty? It might just be my camera settings. Um, Not yet. I use one all the time and I haven't. All I've noticed is that it does tend to bring out transparency. So if I'm painting over like a warmer ground and I'm being really transparent and in front of my, looking at my painting with my eyes, I don't really see the warmer ground coming through. I've noticed that my polarizers kind of expose that a little bit more than I actually seem with my eyes. But um, but I don't know about the other. What the um? What did you say? Burning it. Yeah, I don't know about that. That's interesting. It might be a camera setting. Yeah, I'm, I'm messing around with my. I don't know. Burn no. Burning no. Um, and I shoot everything in raw, so I'm messing around with my settings right now as we speak. I do. I always shoot in raw so that you mess with all those settings again once you bring. 
because I have I have polarizers on my my phone here or my camera rig, aka my cell phone. And uh, yeah, I get. I mean, it, it'll shoot through. You know what I found? It shoots through like semi-transparent to transparent applications of paint. Sometimes yeah. it doesn't like it, it. It does something weird to it. I don't know what it is. Um, it's if you're using the. I use polarizing film over my lights and then a circular polarizer on my lens. Right. And it is doing something weird because it's making it's making oil paint that dries matte not look like it's matte. So it's right. doing something really strange. Like it's penetrating through everything. Black matte. Yeah, so Aaron, our question, uh, our answer is, um, well, Tyler just doesn't know. Yeah, um, here, wait, let me get, this is my answer. Shit, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> you know, that is an answer. That is an answer that you give yeah. often. Sometimes you got to say you don't know. I haven't been varnishing my, I used to, I usually varnish my pieces, but before photographing them, um, but I don't anymore because I want to get them. I, I need to produce them, the photographs a little bit earlier than the pieces varnish. So I have noticed a difference with that, that photographing. I don't know. Are you talking about screaming and like squealing? Okay, everybody, Aria is having a nightmare. She's having a bad dream right now. She's 100% asleep. She's working in her sleep. How excited she is to have life brush going on. Oh my God, it's cute. This, this filter you're using is really weird. It's like, put the dog in the basket. <laughs> the dog's having a dream. Put it in the basket. I like to hear it. it I watch it, this mod. You know what? It kind of like. <laughs> we should... This is like the longest dream sequence. This is crazy. She's never, she's never had this long a dream before. Anyways. Uh, she definitely does have, or it does have a list of names, Dr. Mondo 7, um, that she dreams of. Uh, she The names are Squirrel, Rabbit, dog proto proto yeah <laughs> those those are the things that aria dreams of okay uh jacob is sweet asks do you guys like glossy varnishes i find the reflection super distracting yeah uh oh. i i'm not I'm not really a huge fan of uh i think ty all right i don't know if i'm gonna say that i speak for you i might speak for you and saying that you and I, I think we have a similar taste in varnish. We don't like super glossy. We don't like super matte. We like more like a satin pearlescent type of finish, right? Yeah, like, I've, I've gone, I mean, I've gone back and forth, but I, I do, I think that's, right now I'm doing glossy, but I think I'm going to go back to making the mixture um, where you kind of use half of the um, Gamvar that's gloss and half that's satin. Um, or yeah. matte, and then you get or sort matte. of a satin finish. I think I'm going to go back to. They no, used I've... to. I used to varnish with liquid, which I shouldn't do. Um, or you should. Who cares? Um, <laughs> and I like that finish. It's like a satin finish. I don't care. I mean, who cares? Great. Nice. Love, love to hear this kind of advice on the show. Really good job. Um, I'm not sure if that was great advice, Tyler. No. <laughs> Based uh, off of the reaction. Okay, you know, according yeah, to yeah. the whatever, according I mean, to I the just... chemical specs of liquid, yeah. varnish with it. But um, I I don't even varnish. I don't, I'm with Ray, though. I don't varnish before I photograph because I have the polarizers. So the painting looks like it's wet anyway. Yeah. When I photograph. Got that from good a good... The good man that is Howard Lyon. Thank you so much for hooking me up with all that cool yeah, stuff. Yeah, Howard. It was a good. It was a good hole in my pocket to 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 have because that really saved everything. 
I remember in, in school, right? We kept trying to figure out the right kind of varnish. Like we were using the Dude, the wax yeah. stuff, um, which is interesting if you really want a super matte finish painting. Um, but, you know, you kind of lose your deep darks when you do that. So it's not as cool a glossy one. But yeah, you just got to find the right in between. If it's super high gloss, like final varnish, sometimes that's that's pretty annoying. You, you like You can't look at it in any lighting scenario. Yeah, I found that, ugh, I just, I hate, uh, varnish, man, I, it drives me crazy. Yeah, do we like, need it? You know, that retouch varnish is, um, do we need it? Yeah, I guess we, we do. It really does unify the painting, though, so that, like, everything felt like it was painted at the same time, and it dried at the same time, uh, and it's still wet, it's still retaining, um, um, you know, it's, it's depth, uh, and so, but, it's such a pain. It really I like, you just mentioned, um, and I like that yeah. as well, but I guess I was, someone was telling me the other day that's used a lot of varnish over the years that retouch can eventually settle back. To, um, like if you just, if you had a painting that had a whole bunch of matte areas and a whole bunch of gloss areas and you wanted to even right. it out, and so you coated the whole thing in retouch right. it would it will eventually settle back to those original Correct. mat and gloss so you Correct. you still want to put like gambar or final varnish eventually well right well the reason why retouch varnish is, was so often used was because there was no gambar there was only final varnish where you would have to wait uh, to traditional varnish you'd of course have to wait months for the painting the cure to then right. varnish it you couldn't just do it when it would uh, and gambar so, so people would use retouch varnish, which would allow you to put varnish over it when it was touched dry, and it would even everything out. But it would eventually kind of fade. But we're talking, we're talking a couple of years. Yeah, but, yeah. I think it takes a while to, to back to those. Yeah, yeah. But still, you know. And so, but Gamvar came along and said, "Well, you know, you can." Um, and retouch varnish allowed you to go back in and retouch the painting, go back over it. So. It's a good practice to, um, you know, var uh, it, I, I like Gan Bar qu uh, quite a bit because you can, it can be dry to the touch and then you can just go over it with it and it's not going to, it's a final varnish. Yeah. The problem is you can't paint over it, uh, your pieces with the final, you know, after it's been varnished. So you have to remove the varnish in order to do that. Um, yeah, and I've I actually I recently did, recently did that. that. I had a painting that had some issues, and I had to take the varnish off. It's not too hard, but it's you know, it's like it's fun. it's a bit of work, and and it's you know, there's this constant like, did I take it all the way off? Is there still right. a little bit of it there? I think you can check that with like a black light, or something, but Ding Dong, uh, from Nick to Luca ninety six. When doing an illustration, how do you guys design the character face? Character's face? The character's face. Oh, the character's face. Oh, um, go ahead, Tyler. I mean, you you deal with a lot of like. Yeah, I mean, it depends on. I was going to say, depends on the description that you get, right? Yeah, it depends on what you're working with. Yeah. You're working with someone's IP, character probably already has a look. Probably already have a face, particular facial structure. You don't necessarily have like a 3D model of that face. So you have to basically like, you know, shoot the reference you want and then kind of manipulate the reference. I've done that a lot. You, know, you kind of have like a, a generic head and then you can kind of push it the look of the um, specific character. Um, if you're just designing from nothing, um, if you just have like a character description, then that, then you, then that's, I think that's the most fun part to me. Cause it's like, I want to figure out the best facial structure and expression to get across like the feel of this particular character. Um, that's the fun part for me. So that, that just comes down to getting tons and tons of, re like if there's a particular character that has a, Let's just say like um, they're like a pirate or whatever. Um, so I'll get tons and tons of reference of 
movies, like all kinds of different characters that really a lot of scars in their face or just any sort of character in their face that's interesting. And I'll kind of have a big board of all these different faces pulling aspects that I mashing those together of different and that that's a great place to start in sort of like building a unique I I tend to like like bust it up look look at nine fingers. Um, but, I liked the rough. <laughs> but there's a million ways to really do it, but um I like to start that way. Um you know if if it's a certain ethnicity, then I'll get a bunch of different references of that ethnicity and people that represent because they have very specific facial features that you use, but then you also really don't want to get into a caricature that sort of background. Right. That that's never what anyone wants. So you want to be authentic and you want to look at what makes the differences. That that's all just observation, practice, and reference. So it's so easy to see that somebody didn't get reference for ethnic group um, because it looks like a caricature of that group. That's a it's definitely a dangerous territory. So get lots of good reference for that. And you know, luckily Google Images is full of a billion images of people. That's all I have to say about that. I think you're muted the whole time. But, uh... <laughs> and that's how you paint perfect faces. Uh, Jacob is sweet. Asked, do you guys use any special programs to put your reference together? I tried Pure Ref, and I am never going back. Yeah, Pure Ref's amazing. Pure Ref before it's amazing. Pure Ref, huh? Pure Ref all the way. Absolutely amazing. Is that like a, like a reference board thing? Yeah, and it, it maintains the um, resolution of everything. Oh. So, and so you don't have to go in there and like, like no matter what you do, like you can make the image bigger or smaller. It doesn't screw the resolution. It right. just keeps so like, it like rasterize it and then like resample it and rescale it up. Yeah, it doesn't screw it all up. Like, and then you can save them. Which is my favorite thing. I'll make tons of reference boards of like, or if I'm going into a concept push, I'll make like a big reference board of just armor and weapons. Oh. Um, and then you can save that out and send that to the rest of the people that are in the concept push with you in the concept room. Oh, right on. Oh, well, thanks. Thanks, Jacob, for the, the tip. Oh. I didn't even know I have a noise filter on. Noise gate? Yeah, I put a noise gate on because I could hear myself when you were in, in your mic, so I was trying to gate myself. But I think because you do this this thing where you kind of like mumble at the end of your sentences, so you Ow. you're like ducking below your own noise gate. Yeah, so which is you're, the you know. noise gate is doing its job. It's canceling as much of you out as possible. <laughs> yeah, this got real critical. We need to crank the noise gate. Is what basically what we're getting at. <laughs> This is how yeah, I we'll, talk. We'll forget the noise gate next time. It's just causing more problems than it's fixing. Sorry, everybody. I will. I can assure you. I do spend a lot of time with Tyler, and the syllables at the end of his sentences do not matter. Oh wow. <laughs> um, how do I turn that off? Well, we'll, we'll just work. Well, we, we got a few minutes left. left. You just yeah. go to. Just, you I mean, just, just go to, to hit the to Windows project. button, go to Power, and go to Shutdown. <laughs> Go so and then go to the boot menu and select reformat. <laughs> reformat. <laughs> Don't worry about any alerts that pop up. Gotta speak up, yeah. please. Just, just keep clicking OK through some, the whole process. Yeah. Don't need to be some mealy mouth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what? I'm not gonna change. I'm almost 40 years old. I'm not gonna change. Dude, wow, man! I can't believe how old you are. This is not a boomer stream, man. You're going to have to be recasted eventually. <laughs> this is and always have been a boomer stream. Are we, hey, Jacob is sweet, boomer? says Ray. That window panel in your painting is looking awesome. I actually, Ray, the, I wanted to say this too. The sun hitting the backs of your little passengers here. So lovely. Oh, well, it thank brings you. back a lot of memories of standing, waiting for trains in Massachusetts. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's all right. Thank you to both of you. You see, okay. this is this is why I love chat. <laughs> and 
and this is why Kate is irreplaceable. But Tyler, the second you hit 40, you're out of this business. Okay. Like I said just a second ago, it's all right. Savvy Road Game says, Tyler, you should practice screaming at the end of each sentence. <laughs> <laughs> just end everything really high up. Scream. <laughs> That's and great. that's why you want to make sure that you clean your brushes every every single time you use them. <laughs> <laughs> you really like wasn't it like Robert Robert Howard Robert E Howard creator of Conan didn't he like scream? He was known to like scream his uh, his like his words as he was typing them. Oh wow! Yeah, that'd be a weird way to write. Yeah, he was like, "And that Conan took his gold out." You know, like, isn't that crazy? I guess he's like before movies even existed. Well, I guess he's trying to figure out. <laughs> What'd you do today? I just went to a movie. It was, it's a cut of flick. Yeah, maybe it was like how they act on stage. And I was yeah. really stage like. What'd that guy know, anyways? Yeah, what is. <laughs> gotcha. You know, that reminds me of because um, we haven't talked about movies in, in a bit. Yeah, that, they should have when they um because you know like Sean Carter was a flop and everything. I didn't hate it. I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, um, there should have been no reason why that movie. Uh, they should have done. Remember. I think we've talked about this a million times, but they should. I know it's just in, the biggest in big disappointment bold ever, letters because it came out exactly one hundred years after the book came out. Right. They should have had in gigantic bold letters one hundred years in the making. Right. Should have been on every poster. Yep. Yep. Should have not been called should, John Carter. There should have, it should have been, yeah, I know, it should have been A Princess of Mars, right? And who cares? Because people were all afraid of Mars needs uh, moms or something like that. Remember that yeah, movie that flopped? That was a focus group thing. They did like a focus group, which, you know what? We don't have to get into my distaste of focus group. But they did a focus group and a bunch of people didn't like the word Mars because of that mom's mars animated film right and so they had to they just changed it to straight up john carter and i will tell uh, i'm just john like, carter you know that that's that, my question that movie, movie going. That, who's john carter it's just the movie is the thing about the movie is like I like john carter that's the thing uh, edgar rice burroughs was jerry bruckheimer before jerry bruckheimer right so so before jerry bruckheimer there was there was edgar rice burroughs you read his books, that's the way they, they they're crazy over the top action films. It should have been an over the top action film. And it should have been told like that. And it just wasn't. And it's just, it's, you got to go full ham and they didn't. And they yeah. tried to make them, I don't know what they did. Like it was just, uh, yeah. I think some of the perils of it though are. Been in development forever. It was in development forever, but it was also. It was a 100 year old story so the story had already been done like 18 times by eight different movies flash right. gordon does it almost to a t yeah like yeah so there was a little bit of like story fatigue like well we can't just we you know i imagine they had those conversations right we can't ham it up and make it crazy like flash gordon because flash gordon already came out and everyone's seen flash gordon yeah i was like but they they were they were so strict to the first book and I'm like, you guys ain't making more than one of these movies. <laughs> I mean, who are you kidding? Million dollar movie. <laughs> yeah, get out of here. And so they they should have just combined a bunch of the books. I mean, the crazy traps and like Burroughs gets nuts. Yeah, make it an actual. One. He gets nuts. I don't know, man. Like it's just like he, he apparently. I'm 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 getting this from. Our good friend Eric Johnson, the great. Um, he told me that Burroughs didn't realize <laughs> well, John Carter wasn't supposed to like he didn't, it was unexpected that it was this crazy smash hit. So they wanted another mo uh, another book. And he wrote like he wrote the second one, like I mean the second and third one. He wrote this he wrote the sequel or sequels like in stupid time. Like it was just like he was. <laughs> Yeah, like a weekend, you know, and it's just like, and it's like, and then this happened, and then this happened, but it's so much fun, so much fun. Check them out, folks. 
never read these books. Tarzan, uh, he wrote Tarzan and yeah, Marion. Yep. No, he didn't write Conan. No, he didn't write Conan. No, Tarzan. Yeah. Yeah. And then a bunch of other things. Boom. I don't know, but yeah. No, Robert E. Howard wrote Conan. Man, the best. All right, boys. Oh, we're coming up on time. Oh, yeah. Here. Here we go. Yep. Yeah. yeah, we got two minutes. Say good night. All right, this, folks. Well, this time I got to remember to do the ending screen. Yeah. Yeah. Please do. Yeah. We really. really. Okay. We're really hard on that. So I want to thank everyone for um, joining us today. I'm going to be, I, I think I'm pretty much done with my acrylic stage here. Nice. So I'm going to be finishing or going through the process of finishing this in oil paint. So you're going to see me um, put a layer of oil paints on top of this. And, um, yeah, and then we'll take it from there. Uh, so uh, my name is uh, Ray Bonilla. You can find me on um, Instagram at Ray Bonilla Painter and RayBonilla.com. Uh, Instagram, on Instagram, I've got a bunch of, um, currently uh, uh, there's an enrollment that's open for one of my classes in, in uh, smart school. It's called Painting uh, uh, Light and Color, Impactful Light and Color. Uh, uh, and it's a painting course uh, talking about light and color and um yeah go check it out if you're interested um we get to you get to sign up for it's an online men mentorship and there's a whole bunch of uh, information on there and my website is raymondbonilla.com that was really good exit dude. really well done <laughs> um um uh, next week i'll probably keep working on this a little bit because i didn't do the nights i was going to work on the nights so i didn't work on the nights I did find this tangent you guys are talking about, though. Um, so I'll be fixing that right here. Here, I'll, I'll make <laughs> wanna, a new layer to point. I want to thank the tangent it. police. I feel like it's right here. Right here. Um, so, yeah, and I've, I've been Tyler Jacobson. You can find me at tylerjacobsonart.com, and my Instagram is tylerjacobsonart. And um, thanks for joining us. And yes. See everybody next Kate. week. Good night. Yeah, thank you to our amazing producer, Kate. You're very welcome. That's what shit ending screen. Oh, yeah, go to the ending screen, everybody. Here we go. Click that I have to scream good night. Good night. Goodbye. Goodbye.